Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So in this video, we're reviewing the latest notes from Morgan Stanley who've recently upgraded their Tesla stock price target with a base case of $900 per share and a bull case of $1,272 per share. So let's get into the video. And by the way, since I know there's a lot of crypto lovers watching and people who like free stuff, it's your lucky day. For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in free crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. It also helps out the channel. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. So the big change here, a whopping increase in the Tesla stock price target from $880 in the base case to a whopping $900. Huge increase here. Let's read why. Ahead of Tesla's 1Q earnings this coming Monday, we update our model to mark to market the 1Q actual delivery forecast and to address an emerging concern in the market, potential anti-Tesla sentiment in China, and our views on Tesla's capacity plans at a high level. One of the key reasons here for the upgrade Tesla delivered 20% more vehicles than Morgan Stanley were forecasting. And um, spoiler alert, if anyone from Morgan Stanley is watching, they're going to keep doing this every time you estimate. Your delivery estimate's way under. doesn't matter what year, what quarter we're talking about. You're missing the mark. Miles under. This is going to keep happening and happening and happening and happening. Watch. We also made adjustments to our volume forecast for the remainder of the year to account for the strong start while allowing for potential supply constraints and other factors. The net result is we raised our financial year 2021 delivery forecast by 3%. <laughs> To 809,000 units. God damn, guys. Oh, man. This is so bad. They're off by at least 100k. Maybe 150, maybe 200,000. It's just... Oh, geez. This is not going to age well. I mean, guys. Anyway, let's move on. We note that our financial year volume is modestly below consensus. It sure is. And the consensus is moderately below reality. As we allow for a margin of safety, given highly fluid supply chain issues impacting the industry, our forward year volume forecast increases very slightly, approximately 1%. <laughs> to 1.1 million units. Yeah, in 2022, they're expecting Tesla to deliver just 1.1 million units. In 2021, Tesla will deliver around 1 million units. 22, probably about one and a half, maybe even more than that. I don't know where these numbers are coming from, and I understand they're trying to be conservative. But if you're so conservative that you're embarrassingly wrong and underestimating, that's not conservative, that's just embarrassingly wrong. This impact, along with some other minor adjustments to the model, lifts our target to $900 from $880 previously. We do not change our bull or bear case valuations at this time. Tesla in China. It seems the investor mood toward Tesla's outlook in China is being dialed back. This is a good thing in our opinion, as market expectations for Tesla in China long term are quite a bit too high in our view. Um, again, I'm going to jump in here now. Morgan Stanley, really, they have an issue. They think the Chinese government's going to prevent Tesla from having autonomous software in the future, all these kind of things. Maybe this happens, maybe this doesn't. But in either case, this is kind of absurd. China is the most important EV market in the world, the largest EV market in the world, the largest vehicle market in the world. The government's heavily incentivized to transition all of China to electric vehicles ASAP. They're giving a helping hand to likes of Tesla, etc. Tesla has certainly taken advantage of the opportunity to start a successful domestically sourced business in China, through which it has helped to significantly improve manufacturing processes and efficiency. Obviously, this is all true. This must be noted, and we estimate Tesla China may realistically account for the majority of Tesla's profit today. We also acknowledge that Tesla is in a position to participate in the growth of the Chinese EV market in a significant way. I also agree with these points. However, we have allowed over the next decade for Tesla's position in the domestic Chinese market to be substantially diluted over time through competition and policies to encourage local players. For example, by 2030, we forecast Tesla sells 740... <laughs> Is this real life? Am I high? In 2030, we forecast Tesla sells 743,000 units in China. Oh, God, dude. This is not going to age well. Holy fuck, dude. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why I'm still harping on about the fact that Tesla has a long way to go. Wall Street does not understand the company. Everyone's underestimating the future. This is, this is hilarious. I mean, can someone set a reminder for like nine years so we can come back and just absolutely roast Morgan Stanley for how wrong they were on this estimate? Like... All right, let's move on. 
For 2021, we estimate Tesla's share of the China battery electric vehicle market to be approximately 14 or 15%. We think it's important that the market understands the possibility that the automotive slash mobility market morphs into a transportation utility run and regulated by the state in concert with domestic champions, not just in China, but all major nations slash regions. Now I do want to acknowledge that the Chinese government is highly likely to help out their local automotive manufacturers much more than a foreign automaker like Tesla. I totally understand this. But I don't think that they're going to actually strangle the company and try to squeeze them out of the market. The thing is, Tesla has such cost advantages, such technological advantages, that they, even if, for example, the Chinese government is giving huge incentives for people to buy locally made, made in China electric vehicles, Tesla, even without these incentives, will be cost competitive on performance, features, functionality, etc. Because they're such great value, they've driven their manufacturing costs far below everyone else on the planet, this will continue over time. So even if Tesla is playing on an unlevel playing field, it's not going to be a big deal over the long term. If Tesla makes compelling products, they will sell in China, irrespective of whether or not Tesla's being disadvantaged in any way. The immediate priority? Expanding capacity and industrializing the Tesla hegemony before the market grows even more crowded. We expect to see the narrative around Tesla for the remainder of the year to be one word. Expansion. That's a fair statement. Expansion along product lines. New top hats, all new segments. I don't even know what the fuck a top hat is. Someone let me know in the comments. I can't even be bothered checking. Assembly plants beyond Austin, Berlin, China number two, and vertical integration. The race to the first terawatt hour of battery capacity to secure their own destiny on supply and storage tech. We believe Tesla itself and many in the market see Tesla as the apex player during the most formative phase of the industrialization of sustainable propulsion and the transition off fossil fuels. Man, that was a mouthful. But they're right. Tesla is the key player here. Massive lead by miles. No one close. They really are the apex predator in this situation. As part of this transition, we believe Tesla will need to address any number of issues around sustainably sourced battery manufacturing and supply chain. We expect to see more investors, government bodies and consumers to be focused on CO2 emissions per kilowatt hour and water usages per kilowatt hour and sourcing of cobalt, etc. More on this to come, but we would expect Tesla to have an opportunity to lead the industry to address these potential flaws in the EV battery ecosystem as they stand today. This is another great point. Obviously, Tesla is leading the charge. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. That was bad. But the point is, Tesla really is leading the charge in the EV market. Everyone else is following their lead. That includes in some of the techniques and technologies involved in extracting materials and so on. So this is absolutely fair. So let's have a look at the three different price target scenarios from Morgan Stanley here, keeping in mind that even in their most bullish scenario, they have Tesla delivering just 8 million vehicles in 2030. Tesla themselves aiming for around 20 million units, more than double. So just keep that in mind. Effectively, Morgan Stanley break down their price targets for a number of components, including the core automotive business, Tesla mobility slash ride sharing, Tesla energy, blah, 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 blah. But in either case, the point I want to make here, I personally believe the bull case from Morgan Stanley, they're literally less than half of what Tesla will actually deliver in 2030. So maybe double their bull case scenario. I don't know. The base case here of $900 per share is based on delivering 5.5 million vehicles in 2030. One quarter of Tesla's target. I mean, it's like... And this is their base case. It's like, yep, we don't believe Tesla's going to get even close to their goals, despite the fact that, let's say, in 2014, Tesla was aiming to deliver around half a million vehicles in 2020. And they did. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe give Tesla a little bit more credit than you are, Morgan Stanley. I mean, for your base case to be assuming that Tesla falls short of their goal by 75%, that's pretty rough. And the bear case here, honestly, not even worth considering. I mean, come on. Well, they've got things like margins contracting. Like, yeah, well, it's going to become more expensive for Tesla to make this stuff while they continue to drive down their costs in every... Yeah, okay, um, unlikely there. So basically, I would say that if you scratch the bear case, you may as well rename the base case to the bear case at 900, the bull case to the base case at 1272, and then probably your bull case, probably around $2,500 per share. Let's call it that. I think in general, Morgan Stanley are far, far too conservative and they're far too doubtful that Tesla can execute on their own plans and achieve their own goals, despite a track record now of a decade and a half of them doing exactly that. Literally, I mean, 2014, they aim for half a million vehicles in 2020, they do it. 2020, they're aiming for 20 million vehicles in 2030. Uh, I mean, are you really going to assume that at absolute best in your bull case scenario, they only get to half of that goal? I mean, seems a bit crazy to me. Of course, maybe Morgan Stanley is scared of being out there on their own and looking like ARK Invest and being pointed and laughed at by everyone on Wall Street until you're no longer pointed and laughed at, but pointed at and admired for being right. I don't know. I just don't get it. Pretty much everyone on Wall Street at this point in time just cannot fathom that there's any chance that Tesla could ever reach the goals they're aiming for. I err on the other side. 
I think with Tesla's track record, their leadership, their engineering talent, their technology, their lead in manufacturing, their innovation in terms of material science, new manufacturing techniques, everything, I personally think that it's fairly likely that Tesla's going to hit their goals. But until then, until Wall Street universally wakes up and understands and the consensus opinion is that Tesla's going to be delivering literally 10, 20 plus million electric vehicles in a decade's time, there's some buying opportunities in my opinion. And I'd love to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comments below. What's your 12 month price target for Tesla stock? Morgan Stanley are at 900. I'm at $420,000.69. Where are you guys at? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like up to $250 in free crypto bonuses with BlockFi, use the link in the description. You can also get two free stocks with Weeble and a free stock with Stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.